The reason why England don't win tournaments anymore, guys, is because every time they have any semblance of a decent squad at all, everyone glazes them. That's the problem. That's the downfall of the English national team. Anytime they have a semi-respectable side, then you lose to Iceland, and it's a fucking national crisis of identity. It's not the way to be. In my life, Italy have won two major tournaments. I think in the rest of my life, England will probably win zero if I had to put money on it. I sure as hell don't think they'll win this Euro. Every one of the two times, I know I'm going to make it sound like it's a big number, but two in my life. I'm 26 years old. It's not that long. Two in my life. Okay. I'm, I'm operating like every 10 years, we're winning a tournament. In the two tournaments that my Italian national team has won in my life. I'm here with two WAPs, by the way. We'll get to that in a little bit. But every one of the tournaments that the national team won in my life, nobody has necessarily thought we would go in and walk through the whole tournament and win. Okay? It's always been faced with hardship. This, by the way, this tournament, with us having, off the top of my head, Zagnolo, Berardi, Acerbi, Scalvini, Udoge, all injured. Others that I'm not even think that I, I can can't think of right now. Verratti, one of our best midfielders, off the grid, living large in Qatar. That's fine. We respect that. However, not available for selection because we have standards in Italy and we don't select guys that go off to low level leagues. And Tonali, because he's a G, he's one of us. He's a man of the people. Gambling ban. All the players that we currently have out would be a catastrophe for most national teams. For us, this is tame. I mean, compared to some of the shit that we've overcome in one tournaments with, you know, in our rear view, betting scandals, teams getting relegated, guys jumping off of balconies to commit suicide. Gianluca Pesato in 2006 said he was overcame with the Holy Spirit. Juve was under investigation with Italian authorities, jumped off a balcony in Turin, said, sorry, I don't know what happened. I passed out. That's what we've dealt with in the past. This is tame in comparison to shit that we've dealt with and overcome and won tournaments from. You don't want to go into a tournament with everyone glazing you saying you're the best thing since sliced bread. I have seen people in the last week say that Italy were probably going to be the biggest disappointment of the tournament and go out in the group. For that to happen, we would have had to lose to Albania today. I got news for you. Okay. High rates of human trafficking and Dua Lipa don't win you football games. They don't. Scoring a goal in the opening 30 seconds, okay, because you catch a guy with his pants down, doesn't win you football matches. Italy 2, Albania 1. I mean, this was a perfect Italian game. Dramatic opening, cinematic. Then we killed the game. Beautiful. Held back. Defense wound up closing it out very nicely. Possessed the ball. You would be remiss if you ruled out the Italian national team in this Euro tournament this year. You're sorely mistaken. Half the team that are currently with the squad are returning champions. The turnover has been outstanding. And we have the best coach probably in the entire tournament. The best manager. We'll talk about Luciano Spalletti on the pod this week. But it is worth remembering, okay, that the burden of expectations is a killer. And that is something that Italy do not have right now. It is something that you would be sorely mistaken if you, if you fall into the trap of. Do not, under any circumstance, ever underestimate the Italian national team. They are, they are great at tournaments when they're there. When they're there. So, I get it. A lot of people were a little bit nervy before this match. The prospect of losing to Albania is cinematic. I mean, it's, it's a catastrophe. If we would have lost to Albania today, that would have been, I mean, that would have been, it would have been the dream scenario for most of our, you know, most of our rivals, but also it would have been exactly, it's the exact type of banana skin that you have to avoid in tournaments. But you got to bear in mind, this team is built of guys who are playing in the top league. Many of them are the best players among some of the best you know, youth players in all of, all of world football. And that's not a coincidence. 
Uomini forti, destini forti. So. Fine. Keep glazing England. I know this. They're playing as much PlayStation as they want over in the England camp. We have rules. We're deadly focused on the goal, and we're off to a great start. I'm Sam Adamo, and this is The Bordello. All right, what's going on, folks? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of The Bordello. We're coming at you guys in the immediate aftermath of the Azzurri's opener at Euro 2024. I'm graciously being hosted at my buddy Mango's house, who you'll remember from a few weeks ago. Mango's on a hot mic. How are you? You're playing NHL right now. I need you to dial in. I need you to focus here. It's war, Mango. Doing good, doing good. I'm dialed. I took a shit in your bathroom before. Thank you for having me. That's it's, fucked up. It's lovely. You were saying you wanted to charge me like, uh, like, Euro they, style. like they do in Europe. Uh, you got to give me a little bit of grace. I, I, had, I had two Peronis, two cigarettes, and a, and a sandwich at lunch, all right? And I was watching an Italy game in public. Can we agree that watching a game in private is better, just objectively? Like, when you're in public, you will not be watching the game. You will not actually be watching the combinations on the field. I had a very hard time during the game today because the guys I was with at our table kept counting. They were doing quantum math, counting the number of throw-ins in the game. Because you have fucking idiots that are, like, you know, levying parlays. Should I cash out? Should I not cash out? Oh, fuck, yes, let's go. Albania have a corner. Celebrating Albania corners. If you want to feel like a degenerate, watch games in public. Watch games in public. You will see, you you will see the uh, it's you you will see people that, that that are just that are not as invested in it as you. If you're really about it, if this really is war, you need to be sitting down, examining wartime tactics. You need to be examining field. You know, I don't know. Just, how your soldiers are doing in the field. You're not doing that when you're in a bar and there's guys gambling on the number of throw-ins in the fucking game. What do we have? Over or under th 35 throw-ins? 34 and a half throw-ins? Was the parlay of the table that I was at, Mango? Was that what it was? 34 and a half. 34 and a half. Yeah. So, by the way, that's how they... I was telling Mango, I was telling you before, that's how they get you, right? Is what they do is they say... Here, bet on Italy to win, bet on this many corners for this team, this many corners for that team, and under this number of throw-ins, right there and then you think, hey, these, this looks like pretty good odds. No one knows what the normal line on a throw-in, you know, on the throw-ins in a game is. No one knows what is normal in that regard. So, anyway, I mean, we, by the way, we watched it at like a hipster, in a hipster area. I kind of wish... I kind of miss going to like a retarded degenerate area like the East End of Montreal where you have guys saying, bro, where's Andrea Bellotti? Why is Andrea Bellotti not playing? Why is Federico Maqueda not playing? Shout out. We're without the Maqueda jersey in the background today. We're, we're going bare back. Do you guys see that... Uh, Joe, do you know that Federico Maqueda, this Italian kid who played for Man United, got fined 15,000 euros or 15,000 pounds because he called someone on Twitter a stupid little gay when he was 19 years old? And that same week, Ravel Morrison got fined half of that for calling someone... For calling someone a fag. For calling someone the bad one. Ravel Morrison, he may, I mean, Makeda may as well have called him a Batti boy. That would have been better. <laughs> he, he got fined 15,000 pounds for calling him a stupid little gay. Anti-Italian discrimination. Anti-Italian discrimination. <laughs> so I like going to RDP where you have guys that are saying, bro, whatever happened to that guy Federico Makeda? A guy who when you Google him probably and you, go, and you hit the news tab, the only news you will get is... Whatever happened to Federico Makeda? Where are they now? There is something charming about a major tournament going out, being among the masses, and you have people of you know with varying degrees of knowledge on the sport. Everyone at the place we were at today was too knowledgeable. The guy next to me was talking about how he shifted to a back three when Cambiaso came on. It's a little. It's a little. I, I can't have that. I need guys yelling at the screen saying, "Bro, where's Balotelli?" You know. I need guys saying, bro, who is this guy, Folo Runcho, bro? He's Italian? Fuck. Bro, this guy looks Sicilian. 
That's what I need. By the way, respect. We capped out for Lorenzo. That's that's a good fucking day right there. That's a good fucking day. Spalletti at the end of the game puts on the ball winning guy. He's not going to see another second of action the rest of this tournament. I hope you realize. By the way, congrats to Albania for scoring 20 seconds into the fucking game. That's Albania's one goal of the tournament. We can all agree, right? Is Albania going to have another fucking shot on target after this game against uh, Spain and Croatia? But, you know, that's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. We were saying, it's great. When you're Albania and you're winning a game, when you're beating Italy for like nine minutes, that's what the Euro is about. It's about feeling like you're the best for five minutes. That's enough to make you accept not having qualified for a World Cup. You know, it's shit like that that makes you keep coming back like a junkie. We have, we got, by the way, like, can we just say, because this is the first game of the tournament, we agree, this is the best looking team in the entire tournament, right? The Italian national anthem is something to behold. The Italian national anthem is something to behold, not because they sing, but because they all look like, uh, they all look like, just, they all look like they deserve to have their dick sucked, don't they? They all just, those are just good looking kids right there. Those are good looking boys right there, you know? Those are good looking guys right there. You know that your mother and your aunt watching that are like, they're looking at Gianluca Scamacca and they're like, oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, know what it is about him. He, he, he's stunning, you know? There's, isn't it funny whenever you're like watching the Euro and like your grandmother's watching the game and she's like, Ma quando so belle, well. <laughs> she's like talking about how handsome they are. It's like, hey, thanks. You know, I, I'd rather not, <laughs> rather not imagine, you know, the guys my age whose who's dick you'd want to suck fucking, you know, I'd see you. What do, you, what do you think of the game, Luca? What's your read on, on things? Are we, we were a little, we were all a little worried that we would lose to Albania, right? Like, that, that, that's a real concern. I mean, obviously the goal early on is not great, but, but when you play Albania in the first game, you think, well, yeah, it's an easy win, but if you don't win, you're kind of fucked. Did you have a little bit of that in your mind or were you kind of hell-bent on, were you all in on the win? Did you think there was no way we would drop it? No, no, there was definitely a chance we lost. Now, Albania's not a great team. To be fair to them. And I know we've been crapping on them a lot the last week. Let's be honest. I mean, we, I think we, we almost did them honor by beating them today. Because now, you know, we put them out of their misery. We killed off any real hope that they're going to qualify, probably. It was very unlikely. I'd love it if they did. It would be fun. It would be fun to see, you know, a, a group of people that actually, you know, care about, as opposed to the French. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather see Albania go far in a tournament with a bunch of Albanians who left Albania still represented their country at birth instead of people that, you know, I don't know, have been in France for a generation. I like the idea that you're just clinging to like history when you're an Albanian person. That's nice, you know? So I would like to, uh, I would like to see Albania go on a run. Let's be honest. It's probably not likely. We probably kind of put them out of their misery right now. Now they get to follow Italy and they get to say, there are guys. We beat them. We beat them with a little bit of grace. Now they can pull for Italy like they typically do. It's highly unusual for them to even be at a tournament. You cannot be dropping points to a team like that. Now, all of a sudden, you know, things look great. I don't know about you, but like watching this team here, like watching this team like the first like 30 minutes, it kind of felt a little like Euro 2020. The way we were moving the ball, I like Fratesi and I like Pellegrini a lot. I think they're, they're kind of like, you know, I guess they move the ball in ways that we would see... Uh, I guess Pellegrini's better on the ball, right? Right. I mean, Fratesi's kind of more dynamic going forward in movement, but, but but they both provide a little bit of something that we kind of saw in 2020 when we had a lot of success on the ball, but they're new guys. They're new faces, which is nice. It's encouraging. Um, so, yeah, I don't... I'm, I, I do think that, you know... I found it a little weird to... Not to, you know... I don't mean to be a big homo here and talk about tactics too much, but, you know, I found it a little weird that, like, Ricardo Calafiori was playing on the left side with Di Marco instead of Bastoni in the first half. Uh, I think for the whole game, actually. That was a little bit weird. Did you even clock that mistake by Di Marco? Were you watching the game, or were you just, like, kind of, like, ordering a beer when that goal went in? No, no, we were watching. It was... Uh, I saw the shot. Symbolic. I saw the shot come in. I didn't even see the mistake. I know that Di Marco fucked up because I heard it on the call. What exactly happened, to be clear? He he threw it short. The, the throwback wasn't a bad he decision. Threw he threw it back to Donnarumma? Short. No, to Calafiori. Bastoni, I think it was. No, Bastoni. All right. Uh, and it wasn't a bad decision, but he threw it short. I was parking my car when that goal went in, just to be clear. So, 
I mean, in some ways, that's kind of the best thing that could happen. Here's what I'm. Here's what I was worried about actually was that it became like a Macedonia type game where it's nil nil. We don't fully, you know, we don't close any of our chances. We don't close the deals. So we don't close the deal that we have the opportunity to fucking close on, right? And then all of a sudden, you're 67 minutes into a game and it's nil nil against Albania, and you're thinking, Jesus Christ, Spain won three nil earlier today. We're fucked. By scoring early, we almost had to give it to them, and we did. And then we kind of shut it down. We did what we have to do. We we just, you know, we controlled the game. I wonder if that's ironically the best thing that could have happened to us. We may not concede another goal to like the semifinal if we go on a long run here, you know? Donnarumma looks sharp. Nice save at the end. I like that UEFA didn't give... I like that the refs didn't give a corner kick to Albania at the end of the game when they very clearly, with like five minutes left, had a one-on-one -on -one chance. That Donnarumma clipped with his like ribs almost. Went out for a corner. They gave it as a goal kick to us. I like that UEFA knows where the money is. I like that they said Italy's got to, you know, we can't have Italy fucking bomb out of the Euro early on. So, Albania's cool for the vibes in the group stage. But, you know, you got to make it tough on them. You got to say, hey, listen, brother, buddy, if you're going to get out of here, you're going to have to fucking beat Albania and say a prayer, you know. So, I, uh, no, I like that. Man. I like Donnarumma's game. I liked... I like Barella's game a lot, and he he's kind of. I know he went out. He went out in the second half injured. Our midfield feels like it's a little beat up, but I don't know, man. What if we like? Could we like call in the Atalanta doctors to like just administer some tests, whatever you know, so that if they any you know if any of the guys ever test hot on like a drug test, it'll just like fall on the club. You know what I'm saying? What if what if we just like. What if we doped all the Inter players on the team? We just, because, what is it? Inter that has the most players on the team? Just dope all the Inter players. And then if they get caught on a hot fucking piss in September, it'll be an Inter scandal. It'll be Inter's doping. It won't be the Italian national team's doping. It'll be Inter's doping. That'll be the common denominator. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am don't know about you guys. I mean, fucking, not to be that guy, but just, I don't know, just, Leave a comment, I guess, on, on what your read is. I don't know. I, I, I know this is kind of a podcast primarily, but this is on video. This is on YouTube. I don't know. Just engage with me and say something other than, uh, you know, Alba I don't know, Albania owns Southern Italy. Maybe like a comment section bereft of like the Albanian uh, rage. That, that would be nice for a couple of days now. You know, can we say that we like, you know, we disposed of you guys and you now can kind of bow down to the to the big brother and just pull for us the rest of the tournament, you know? That'd be nice. Um, but yeah, I, I, Jude, do you guys have Italian flags on your cars? Not currently. We used to. Will you be putting one up? I like that your father's. Uh, your father's a. Your father's. Uh, he's part of. I, I won't say what your father does. He's a. He's a. Uh, uh, he's part of a professional order. He's a professional. What's the word? He's in the professions. He's, he's part of a professional order of highly remunerated Respect. people. And he still and he still puts the Italy flag on his car when he goes to work. We have we have the, the small emblem, but not the flag. What do you have? The small like emblem that you put on the back there. Oh you've got you've got the tattoo on the car. Yeah, you've got yeah, the bumper yeah. sticker. Well it's not a bumper sticker, it's a fucking emblem. But... Yeah. Oh wait, what? What's the difference? It's like uh, you could rip it substance. off. No, exactly. It's like uh, it looks like a button almost instead of like a, a decal. Your father won't put on a flag during the tournament. We used to, but I don't know if we will this year. It's a little much. It is a little much. I will say, the older I've gotten, the more the more lame it feels. But I do kind of enjoy like when I get on the highway with like my national team's flag, and I just feel the fucking torque of the fucking. I feel the torque of the flag, dude. You know, you hear it in the wind. And what I love doing is I love driving like an asshole, just making people racist toward Italians. You know, like who's that fucking jerk off right there? These fucking Italians don't know how to drive. That that is fun. Like I do fully think that every time I take my my car with the Italian flag, people think people kind of go home hating Italians a little more because they just see how I drive on the road, and they you know they they kind of I don't know I just, I um I, I just give us a bad name. It is. I don't know. It's fun. It's fun to kind of test uh, test the boundaries of, of, of how, you know, how, how, far, how far the flag could go too. Because I was I was running late today. I'm fucking, I was on the highway. I thought the thing was going to snap. Thankfully, you got to have another one in the car. You got to have a second one as a backup just in case, you know. 
here, here's what I was concerned about. I was asking you before if you saw a video of this. You were telling me you had. I was deeply concerned that we were going to bomb out of the tournament because I thought that Luciano Spalletti was being too much of a nerd. So I said that he was the best manager in the tournament earlier, and I believe that. I believe that to be true. However, I do think, part of me, part of me thought the team won't buy into him because he's kind of got this like weird headmaster energy, and we were imitating him on the pod the other day. I will say this. There have been these rumors. Have you guys heard the rumors that Italy have banned PlayStations in their national team camp? I don't think it's a rumor. It's confirmed. It's co it was almost confirmed. Spalletti came out the other day and had to make a statement on it. He had to he had to release a statement on on uh, the, the whole PlayStation ban. Maybe you could pull that up. It's very interesting. But but <laughs> pause pause the NHL game here. Just, just look this up. I want you to look up Spalletti and Donnarumma speak on PlayStation ban. Joe, it was rumored that the Italian national team players cannot have headphones when with their team. They cannot stay up past a certain time. It's basically a day camp. It's basically sleepaway camp. And on the massage tables, they cannot use their phones. They got to talk to each other. So when I saw that, I thought he might be isolating the players right away. He could also conversely be like, you know, going full Chinese with them, just like cutting off, cutting off ties to the outside, you know, making, making of it like a little communist state. Mango, do you have the article? Look up the Football Italia article. There's a Yahoo Sports article. Look right. up the Football Italia one. There's some quotes I saw. I, I don't remember them exactly, but guys, there's some of the craziest quotes I've seen out of any, any manager in sports at any level in a very long time. What do you have? Yeah, I hear it. I got to hear it. Okay. I want you to read through. Read the article to me here because I don't have it in front of me. I'm going to listen to this off the, off the dome here. Reiterated that is he has not imposed the ban on PlayStation games. Rather, he's advised his players against staying up until the early hours of the morning. Okay, hang on, hang on. So he apparently told them, guys, non giocare alla play fino alla you know fino alle due di mattina. Like, don't play PlayStation all night. Okay, fair, fine. He came out and said something else. I think he said he basically went full Trump. He's like, we have plenty of PlayStations. In yeah. fact, in fact, I've played them. In fact, Spalletti clarified that Italy have a full games room with several game consoles at their base in Germany. And the coach <laughs> Is he Kim Jong-un? He's like, actually, people in North Korea, we have a full... I mean, they're eating very well over here. We have a full game room. So great, in fact, that I've used it. Yeah, and the coach has had a few games himself. He's had a few games in himself. He's a man of the people. It's, you know, like just when I see that, I think this guy, he comes across as a bit of a loser. When he's like, no, no, we haven't banned PlayStations. It's like he's trying to be relatable. He's like, yo, 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 this is him. This is Spalletti. He's saying, yo, yo, I know the slang with the kids. Yo, I'm playing PlayStation 2. Yo, fucking, we're playing Fortnite and shit. We have created a games room where there are two beautiful PlayStations. And two I play beautiful them PlayStations. Too. We have a beautiful games room with two PlayStations. In fact, we play very much. It's cr crazy. Is that not one of the crazy... <laughs> Like, what a great... Like, imagine if we had lost to Albania today. By the way, what a nightmare. I mean, after all the shit I talked, thank God. I had all my fucking Serbian buddies, like, texting me, like, hey, you better win 6 nothing. 6 nothing. Who's going to score for fucking... And me? The fucking physio? Who's going to score for 6 nothing? But you imagine if we had lost to Albania, and, like, the last quote from the day prior to the game, Spalletti's like, we have a beautiful game room. We have a beautiful game room. I love fucking playing COD. <laughs> like, you know? So... I mean, and, and then there was another video I saw the other day of Rocco Hunt, the rapper, who's not really a rapper. He's more of a, he's more of like a singer who kind of writes his own lyrics and he kind of occasionally does cringe rap. You know what I'm saying? He's like, like, a, like an Italian logic, you know? No one sees Rocco Hunt and says, whoa, cool. People see Rocco Hunt and go, basically it's rap for women. You know what I'm saying? He's singing. He's singing a cappella. I was telling you this the other day. Or I was telling you this earlier. The other day, he's in their changing room. So you hadn't seen this, right? No. Okay, maybe we'll overlay this or whatever. But but dude, Rocco Hunt, whose who's handle on Instagram is Poet Urbano, the urban poet. He's basically a theater kid in a room with Mattia Zaccani, who's dating Chiara Nasti, who's got... 
like the largest, most comical Barbie tits you've ever seen in your life. I mean, this is a stupid guy right here. This is a fucking douchebag who has a neck tattoo and fucking skin fades all the time. And he's dating a bimbo. And he's fucking looking at this guy who he would just beat up and probably bullied if they were in high school together. Go. They're all just trying not to laugh. Literally, bro. What? Pause your game here. Look up the video of Rocco Hunt. Joe, I want you to see this too. I want you to see this video. Play it into the microphone. Look at the looks on these guys' faces, bro. Can you imagine? Because again, they're our age. They're younger. They're 24 years old, bro. Can you imagine being with your boys and some guys like, Ciao ragazzi, Forza Italia. And he's fucking doing like American Idol, bro, in the changing room, a cappella with like a guitarist. Spalletti's like smiling. He's like a 63 year old man, right? Look at the looks on their faces. They're all looking at the ground. It's like a Disney Channel song. Oh. So it's like a song about Italian love and music in the summer. It, 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 I don't know. A guy playing acoustic guitar. Kill it. Some, Kill gr it. some great comments there. What are some of the comments? Read me some of the best. By the way, Italian social media comments are the most savage of any fucking group you've ever seen in your life. What do you got? <laughs> Ma è un punizione. <laughs> Can I see? Let me see the comments. Sorry. <laughs> Someone says, Ma perché creare sto disagio? Why, why create this fucking, uh, this, this mass discomfort? La faccia dei giocatori dice tutto. The player's face says everything. Someone says, Più motivazione una cena con Pirlo. You'd be more fired up having dinner with Andrea Pirlo. Joe, you ever heard Andrea Pirlo speak? This is Andrea Pirlo speaking. You watching me? Give me your wine. Give me your glass of wine. Joe. Sono giocato per gli attori per tanti anni. Marcello Lippi, il mister, è stato molto, molto gentile. Thank you. That's dinner with Andrea Pirlo. By the way, that's what you want in midfield. By the way, I didn't like Andrea Pirlo brag about like staying up till five in the morning the day before the World Cup final playing PlayStation, and he had like the game of his life the next day. Became immortalized in Italian history forever. Yeah, it was him and a few of those guys. Him and like Nesta were just yeah. like up all night fucking banging hookers in Germany. Just like playing PlayStation. They probably weren't even banging hookers. They're just for the bros. They're just playing PlayStation, dude. You know? This episode of the Bordello is brought to you by the good people at Evangelista Sports. They are the best soccer outlet in all of Canada. They ship across the country. If you're in Canada, head over to their website, evangelistasports.com or evangelista.com. I don't know. I'm going off the dome here. I don't have an ad read. But just Google them. Go to their website. They've got official Azzurri merch. They've actually got jerseys for any, uh, for pretty much any country during, I mean, I don't know if they have, to be fair, I don't know if they have a Slovenia jersey, but th th if anyone does in Canada, it's them. Um, so if you want to go buy some godless other country's jersey, you can go do that at evangelistasports.com. But if uh, you're a WAP and you're listening to this and you're enjoying this episode, if you want to support the show, they're a... Gracious sponsor, and they're uh, they're the best in the business. I, I buy boots there all the time. They've got fucking cleats. They've got memorabilia. They've got um, you know obviously for in Montreal, the best location is definitely in Little Italy. It's one of the best sports stores in probably all of. It's certainly one of the best soccer stores in all of Canada. Probably, um, I want to say uh, Toronto Italians, which is a soccer shop in Woodbridge in Ontario, could lick my ass and my whole ball sack. I reached out to the guy who runs it. I've heard by all accounts that he's a he's an asshole. I've heard he's a douchebag, and I spoke to him on the phone, and he poo-pooed me. And if you want to dox him on social media, that's fine by me. If you want to dox him and leave him a one-star review on Google, that would make me very happy. Fuck him. They're out of stock. Evangelista don't run out of stock. Go to Evangelista right now. They'll print your Italy jerseys for you. The rule is, 
if you're if you're buying a jersey and you want to put someone's name on it, generally that person should be older than you. You can't put a kid's name on your shirt. That's a little that's a little sus. But if you qualify, if the parameters are, you know, if you meet the parameters and you would like to, get, you know, you'd like to get, I don't know, like maybe Matteo Darmian's, one of the older guys, Matteo Darmian's fucking name on a shirt. If you want to just ruin an Italy shirt, put Matteo Darmian's name on it. You can, um, you could do it at Evangelista Sports. Whose name would you get if you had to get anyone's name at Evangelista? From this team? Yeah. Foloruncio. Follow Foloruncio. Follow I'm thinking... I'm thinking Gianluca Mancini. I'm so happy. I was telling you post game. How great is it that we could beat Albania without having to fucking play the Gianluca Mancini card? We haven't even gone to war yet. We're just warming up right now. But yeah, check out Evangelista. They're uh, they're the best in Montreal. They're one of the best in Canada, if not the best. They ship all across the country. They'll ship in a few days. Check them out right now. Azzurri gear, other national teams gear, club shit. And uh, yeah, fucking goalie gloves. Best boots out there. They've got it. They've got new colorways. Get it there. It'll get the new colorway of the fucking Nike Mercurial, babe. It'll make you play better. It's worked wonders for me over the over the years. Thanks for tuning in to the ah fuck. I have to cut that out. Ah fuck it. We're keeping all this in. Anyway, uh, I'm talking to Evangelista here. Thank you for sponsoring the pod. Check them out. Thank you. Bye. Anyway, so thank God we won the first game because had we not, there was. I, I will say this. And we'll kind of leave all this in our rear view after, you know, I guess I, from this game onward now, I mean, for the future pause, I guess we'll kind of leave all this shit in the rear view because it is, it is just that. It's in the rear view. But when I saw this, dude, I thought all the variables, all the factors are in play for us to have a, a, a cataclysmic fucking embarrassment of a tournament right now. When you've got a guy with big glasses, like a skinny fat guy from Salerno going, Forza ragazzi. And by the way, this is a problem because you don't have like Lorenzo Insigne and Ciro Immobile there. You don't have like the Napoli block who kind of like him. Bear in mind, these guys are older, right? Immobile is born in 1990. He's 34 years old. He, Insigne is like, I think he's like 33 now. He'll be 33 this month if he's not already. So, you know, they're a little older. They don't like fucking Rondo da Sosa. You know what I'm saying? They're millennials. There's a fucking difference. This is a Gen Z team that we got here, you know? Everyone likes to talk about like the different demographic groups and Gen Z versus millennials, whatever the fuck that means. Like when you had that Neapolitan block a couple years ago, you could get away with this because they were the best players on the team. You know, Insigne was the best player on the team. Everyone wanted to fuck him, even though he was like tiny. Everyone wanted to fuck him. Um, everyone wanted to be him. Everyone wanted to look like him. All the dudes, you know, in the bars would like wear his jersey. So he was cool. He was fucking cool, and he he would have vetted. Rocco Anti. He would have said, yeah, we go to the same barber. He's cool. Insignia at the end of that would have got up. Because here's the thing about like the Neapolitan players. They'll get up and they'll, they'll like have a tear in their eye. They'll like shake his hand. They'll give him two kisses, you know. Lorenzo Insigne would say, he would say, literally Insigne would have reposted that with like a big fucking heart and said, fra, fra, fratello mio. That's what he would have said. Nobody on this team is doing that dog, you know. So, so, you know, th thank God, thank God we disposed of Albania. Hopefully that, you know, goal early on can kind of be a wake up call. I think, you know, I'm thinking we go like nil, nil against Spain, dude. I'm thinking like a fucking tough nil, nil draw. We both go through a little biscotto. Wouldn't it be nice if they both just kind of understood, Hey, let's both help ourselves here. Let's try to, let's try to put the odds on our side. Italy fancied their chances against Croatia in the last game. Spain definitely fancied their chances against Albania in the last game. Let's just have a nice little... Let's play it out nice and easy with Spain, you know. Mediterranean Brotherhood. Let's fucking, you know... Let's dispose of those Balkan dogs. That, that's the energy I want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck, man. Um, fuck, dude. I, I'm, I'm kind of happy that... Uh, I'm kind of happy that... I'm kind of happy that I won't have to buy the IFTV shirt. Did you guys see that IFTV came out with a, a jersey with like Michelangelo as being like an inspiration? They got like the Statue of David and like the Sistine Chapel. I mean, all the stuff that makes you want to throw up. Yeah, they're, they're fucking cringe, but I, I thought the shirt was decent. Yeah, I just can't do it in Goodwill because I know it's guys in New York who can't pronounce like Spalletti. Yeah. Like literally, when, when you know, like, res like listen, I respect what he's done. In, I guess I respect what he's done in business, but what Marco Messina does, and God bless him, he's an Italian kid. He wants the team to do well, you know, and, and, and he's putting out shit for people to, you know, for people to watch that speak English that like Italian. But what he tries to pronounce Luciano Spalletti 
and he says it the way I just said it there, and that's him doing his best. He can't, he can't, he can't roll his L's. Luciano Spalletti. He can't do that. Come si chiama? Si chiama Luciano Spalletti. What does he say? In my opinion, in my opinion, here's the thing with Luciano Spalletti. I don't know. Fucking, you, you. Why don't you get? Can you get a clip of IFTV saying Spalletti? That's how they say it. They say Spalletti. Say Spalletti. I think Spalletti is very. Spalletti's a good coach. He's the best coach we got. They kind of like put on this weird Italian accent, but they can't, you know, pronounce words. So again, it's fine, but just knowing in the back of my mind that the guy can't even pronounce Donnarumma. Donnarumma. Not to be that fucking loser who's like, oh, you pronounce it correctly. But just in my mind, I can't buy a shirt, you know, that a Greek guy's got 50% equity in. And they're like, yeah, Sistine Chapel. La Pietà, La Pietà di Michelangelo, cazzo, non si può neanche dire Michelangelo, you know, like, it's, it's, it's a little much, so, well, thankfully we got, uh, we got Evangelista sponsoring the pod, man, that's, uh, that's rich, that's rich, man, that's, it's, it's, that's good for the brand, it's gonna be a lot of, it's gonna be a lot of fun to, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to actually rock the proper, the proper kit, I actually was thinking, maybe I'll buy the ITV kit, it'll be cheaper, bro, it's like, it's like, the same price. It's like a hundred and it's like hundred ten bucks. You know, to, to, to quote, uh, what was it? My cousin Vinny, you're, you're you're paying for advertising. You're paying for advertising there. I don't know. Any uh, any last thoughts, kind of on the game at large that you'd like to that you'd like to share now that you've what is it? Oh, you're you're about to go to overtime here in this NHL game. I, I'm gonna want to dial into this. This is fucking riveting stuff right here. Let's uh, let's focus. Last thoughts? Yeah, last thoughts on the game. What's what's the? It's uh, no, I think you covered it well. It's it it feel it's early. It feels like twenty twenty one team of destiny. You know, no, I was talking with Joe. No superstars, but guys that just buy in that want to win. That sounds like a cliche, but the team is really like strong still. We have to remember that, like just on paper, if you're playing in City A, which most of the team is, almost the entire team is playing City A, except for like I think maybe two guys. I think it's like Giorgino and Donnarumma, and that's it. So other than them, they're all playing in Serie A. It's the most like tactically disciplined league in the fucking world. And they, um, you know, they arguably, listen, the Portuguese team is fragmented and scattered all throughout the world. They have a couple of really big studs, but it doesn't feel like they have the same, you know, it doesn't feel like they have the same cohesiveness of just like playing in the same league, playing at the same, I don't know, playing on the same wavelength. We have the best manager in the tournament, man. I'm telling you, Luciano Spalletti. The problem with Luciano Spalletti is he's only had like, you know, nine months on the job. This whole thing is like gravy. As long as we get out of the group, we're fucking flying. The whole point here is to like build toward the World Cup. So if we could, you know, get a good result against Spain, which we could very well do. I think Croatia look awful. I think it's between them and Albania for last place in the group. On Honest to Christ. I think, you know, we could go on a run. You cannot write, you know, you cannot write us out of any fucking tournament ever. You can't. The problem is, the problem is we're just generally not going to win games 5-0 like Germany did yesterday. Like we would have beat, make no mistake, we would have beat Scotland 1-0 yesterday. We would have beat Scotland 1-0. Wouldn't have been pretty. Scotland, we might have actually beat them by this. It would have been the same game if we played Scotland yesterday in the opener. Scotland would have scored early on, fuck, and then we would have, you know, probably won 2-1. Same thing. But it, 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 it's not how. It's how you finish, you know? So, yeah, man. Listen. Optimism, optimism. The Albania game was a big banana skin. Bear in mind, this is also like an away game. There's so many fucking, I think it was like 200, 300,000 Albanians in fucking Germany. They were like all in Dortmund today, you know? So, overcame that, boom, good. Overcame a goal early on, good adversity. Fucking flying, man. I think Calafiori's got aura. I like the long hair. You need one guy in the team who's got a headband. You need one guy in the team who's got the fucking headband and... and the tattoo sleep, it, it's so critical. You need someone for like young women to look at and say, he he's he's a chef's kiss. You he's got this weird aura. He's like 22 years old. He could be around for 10 years. He could be one of these guys that you, you look to and say, Oh, he's in the team. Good. You know? We just I feel like we have a couple of those guys, we just don't really know about them yet because it's still very, very fresh. So, hey man, w- whatever works. Let's like if it were up to me, I would have got like Gue in the changing room, 
something a little more on their wavelength, you can't give them what they want. You got to give them what's good for them. Sometimes you got to feed the babies vegetables, even though they don't want it. You know, feed them a little Rocco Ant. Good for the soul. You need a Southern Italian poet to sing a cappella and say, we're the most beautiful country in the world. Un'estate italiana, musica italiana, pasta pomodoro, here. It just gives you a semblance of identity. That's what the Albanians have, by the way. They have identity. It's just generally rage induced. It's just we're Albanian for fuck's sake. That's kind of their identity. But it's something, you know? We have that. We're flying. So, you know, off to a great start. Hopefully this was a nice little enjoyable listen for you guys in the immediate aftermath. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of weird to do these like right after the game ends because you don't like have a chance to hear like other news or uh, analysis or whatever. We're kind of going cold turkey. Again, I was watching in public. I watched like none of the analysis pre or post game or at halftime. Heard none of the commentary either. You know, it just, you're just kind of going off of a couple of beers, a couple of darts and uh, a couple of retards around you fucking counting the corner kicks. So that's kind of my like raw uninhibited, you know, take on it. As a rule of thumb, I think we're not going to do a pod again with uh, guys around who are on a hot mic who are playing video games personally that's that's just a personal rule that i'm gonna instill going forward but we're learning hopefully it'll be a long tournament so hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did we're gonna be doing episodes after every azuri match instead of the weekly ones so stay tuned for that some of them might be a little shorter like this one but you know you'll be getting more of them so it's free so you get what you get fuck don't bitch to me fuck you know we just we just reconquered Albania. You're gonna fucking come to me and you're gonna you're gonna give me a hard time. Just be happy. Enjoy the enjoy the uh, enjoy the gruel. Subscribe to the pod if you're new. I mean I'm Sam Adamo. If you wanna add the pod to your audio library, you could listen to it on any audio platforms. The links will be down below if you're on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. We'll do something really fun for the Spain game. I don't know if I wanna spoil it now. Uh, we have a returning guest on and we're gonna do something live in the flesh. And it's gonna be dynamite. I'm really pumped for that because that's kind of a crunch game during the group. So we'll check in in a couple days. Have a good week. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the sweet taste of victory. And remember. Ciao.